Hi, welcome to Fish. First I see Kim, and my name is Linda. Today we're going to talk about grace, but in a little bit different way. Um, this is a comment by someone on um, the website, and I want to share it with you because it's really important how we understand grace. And as you know, here at Fish, everything is taken from the Bible. It is hymn-based, faith-based, Bible-based, all right? Uh, my opinion doesn't matter because I'm human and it's subject to change. What matters is God's Word. So this and everything that you watch here on Fish is based on the Bible. It is the Bible and only Him, nothing else. So let's get into grace. This woman writes in, she said uh, she had an interesting thing happen the other week. She was in a Bible study. Um, it's at her church, and it's um, grace alone, Christ alone, Scripture alone. And she wrote, I thought that we could give grace. But as I learned about how God gives us grace and the ability to forgive and the ability to live the way he wants us to, I found out that I don't give grace. God's grace allows me to forgive and love as he loves, etc. So I had to really chew on this one and take it to God and some of the sisters in Christ at this church helped me understand that me, myself, you know, as a person, um, does not give grace, only God does. Um, well, you know, really. Well, I'm just going to read my, my response to her, okay? So bear with me. Grace, the unmerited favor of God poured out on us by our faith in Christ, is a compelling change agent that, when received, teaches us how to live. The gospel devours the very motivation we have for sin. It completely saps our very need and reason to live any way we want. Anyone who insists the gospel encourages us to sin has simply not understood it yet, nor begun to feel its power. There is a difference between a free pass and grace. A free pass, right, says, I see your sin, friend, and will not call it what it is. I will not call it out. I'll ignore it. And we often call this love, but it isn't really love. It's more love of self. And when you give a free pass, you're choosing to do what's easier on you instead of enduring the temporary, self-inflicted pain of bringing up a difficult subject with a friend, right? So a free pass is easier for us because we can't be bothered, you know? We're just like, yeah, you know, this is going to take some time. So-and-so may get angry with me. I'll let it go. Not a good thing. We should measure our actions of grace with how God extends grace to us. In his grace towards us, God says, I see your sin, I name your sin specifically to you through conviction of the Holy Spirit. I have made a way for your specific sin to be dealt with at the cross of Christ. You don't have to cover it or ignore it or try to deal with it on your own. Because of Christ, you have an avenue to be free of your sin. Confess and repent, and you will be forgiven. I will help you change. Grace looks directly at sin and points it out specifically because of love. God loves us enough to pull us out of the pit of sin. He does to discipline and prune us, to give us joy instead of bondage and despair. Okay? You see where this is going. The love, all right, the love he has for us is what makes grace so powerful. 
The favor of the Almighty is given to us so richly that it compels us to present ourselves to him as instruments of righteousness. Grace, now this is really important what I wrote her, all right? Grace changes us, not excuses us, all right? This is how we grow in Christ. So what does it mean? Okay, I asked her, so what does it mean to give grace to one another? Well, let's go into the Bible. Oh my gosh, what a concept. It primarily means that seeing one another as new creations in Christ, recognizing the grace we received at salvation is working as a change agent in our lives forever. Philippians 1.6. So we're all in process, right? It's a process, not perfection. Only Jesus is perfect, not us. However, that's not another way of saying free pass, right? Process is a call for us as individuals and as the church, meaning the body of Christ, to constantly engage with what God himself has given us, the ability to see sin rather than ignore it. Call sin what it is with gentleness and truth. Remind our friends of the path of confession and repentance available to them, right? And we should cheerlead them alongside as our friends change and do it out of intimate relationships with deeper love for one another, right? Remember, do all things in love. So I wrote Galatians 6, 1, 2. I said, Galatians 6, 1, 2 paints a picture of a spirit-led grace giver. Brothers, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? To love, right? That is what it means to give grace to one another. This kind of grace giving doesn't delight in calling out sin. Mm -mm. And it isn't prideful about being a truth teller, right? I mean, we all like to be right. Well, hey, you know, you're doing something wrong. Come on. The person who practices Galatians and God-inspired grace giving is a person deeply committed to the spiritual vitality of others and deeply attuned to their own spiritual poverty without Christ. We are nothing without him. He or she, right, meaning the person who tells us, has a humility and willingness to go the extra mile for others as a part of a deep devotion to the family of God. And perhaps... Perhaps most importantly, a grace giver has positioned his or herself to receive from friends the very same truth and grace that he or she is committed to giving. How often are we cheating our friends of spiritual growth because we are giving a free pass instead of grace, right? And how often are we cheating ourselves when we want the free pass from friends rather than the truth and grace that ask us to change. So let us truly give and receive grace. Anyway, that's it for fish. First I seek him. My name is Linda. And until next time.